In today's video, we'll be talking about the people of Paris, where they originated from, who they are, their lifestyle, their culture, and their beliefs. So stay tuned. If you are new to our YouTube channel, please kindly like, comment, and share. And don't forget to subscribe. If you are already part of the family, then you're welcome once again. Ewe people are a best-speaking ethnic group, the largest population of Ewe people in Ghana over 6 million, and the second largest population in Togo over 3.1 million. They speak the Ewe language, Ewebe, which belongs to the Gbe family of languages. They are related to the other speakers of Gbe languages such as the Ford, Jin, Fafra, Gaul, Magzin, and the Aja people of Togo, Benin, and southwestern Nigeria. Ewe people are located primarily in the coastal region of West Africa, in the region south and east of the Volta River to around the Mono River at the border of Togo and Benin, and in the southwestern part of Nigeria, close to the Atlantic Ocean, stretching from the Nigeria and Benin border to Ipe. They are primarily found in the Volta region in southeastern Ghana, southern Togo, in the southwestern part of Benin, and a small population in the southwestern region of Nigeria most of whom are settled in Badagri. The Ewe region is sometimes referred to as the Ewe nation or Ewe Togo region, Togoland, in colonial literature. They consist of several groups based on their dialects and geographic concentration. The anglo ewe Redume, Tong, the literary language has been the anglo sub branch. The Ewe people were formerly known as the Dogo. The ancient history of the Ewe people is not recorded. They might have migrated from a place called Ketu or Amejope in Benin, east of the Niger River, or that they are from the region that is now the border between Benin and Nigeria and then, because of invasion and wars in the 17th century, migrated into their current location. Archaeological evidence suggests that the Ewe people likely have some presence in their current homeland at least as early as the 13th century. This evidence leads their dynamism to a much earlier period than previously believed. However, other evidence also suggests a period of time, particularly when Yoruba warriors of the Oyo Empire ruled the region. Their own oral tradition describes the brutal king Agokoli of Noche, a formerly walled town in Togo, ruled in the 17th century. The high handedness of King Agokoli culminated in the escape and dispersal of Ewe people to their present location. They share a history with the people who speak their languages. These speakers occupy the area between Akan land and Yoruba land. Previously, some historians have tried to tie them to both Akan and Yoruba ethnic groups, but more recent studies suggest these are distinct ethnic groups that are neither Akan nor Yoruba. Although they appear to have both influence and taken influence from the two ethnic groups, the Ewe people had cordial relations with the pre slave trade and pre colonial era Europeans. However, in 1784, the world with Danish colonial interests as Denmark attempted to establish coastal forts in the Ewe and Yoruba region for its officials and merchants. Nestled between powerful slave trading kingdoms like the Asante, Dahomey, and Uyu, the Ewe were both victims of slave trading and trade, as well as sold their war captives to the Europeans. After slavery was abolished and slave trade brought to a heart, the Ewe flourished in their major economic activity of cotton and rice farming, palm oil and copra production, and exports. The origin was divided between the colonial powers, initially between the German and British colony. And after World War I, their territories were divided between the British and the British French Joint Protectorate. After World War I, the British Togoland and French Togoland was respectively renamed Transvolta Togoland and Togo. Transvolta Togoland voted in United Nations supervised plebiscites to join the newly independent Ghana. French Togoland was renamed Republic of Togo and gained independence from France on April 27, 1960. There have been efforts to consolidate the Ewe peoples into one unified country since the colonial period, with many post-colonial leaders occasionally supporting their cause, but none have ultimately been successful. The sophisticated theology of the Ewe people is similar to those of nearby ethnic groups, such as the Fon religion. This traditional Ewe religion is called Voodoo, popularly known as Voodoo. 
The word is borrowed from the phone language and means spirit. The every religion hold Mao as the creator, God, who created numerous lesser deities known in every language, trouble that serve as the spiritual vehicle and the powers that influence a person's destiny. This mirrors the Mao and Lisa, goddess and god, theology of the phone religion, and like them. These are removed from daily affairs of the Ewe people. The lesser deities are believed to have meant to grant favor or inflict harm. The Ewe have the concept of Esai, which implies a spiritual marriage between the deity and the faithful. It is typically referred to as a suffix to a deity, thus a forfi. Esai refers to a faithful who has pledged to deity forfi, just like a spouse would during a marriage. Ancestral spirits are important parts of Ewe traditional religion and shared by a clan. Christianity arrived among the Ewe people with the colonial merchants and missionaries. Major missions were established after 1840 by European colonies. German Lutheran missionaries arrived in 1814. Their ideas were accepted in the coastal areas and Germans named their region Togoland or Togo meaning beyond the sea in Ewe language. Germans lost their influence in World War I. Their Christian missions were forced to leave the Togoland, and thereafter, the French and British missionaries became more prominent among the Ewe people. About 89% of the Ewe population, particularly belonging to the coastal urban area, has converted to Christianity. However, they continue to practice the traditional rites and rituals of their ancestral religion. The Ewe people are patrilineal people who live in towns, cities, and villages that contain lineage. Each lineage is headed by the male elder. The male ancestors have Ewe and revealed. And traditionally, families can trace male ancestors. The land owned by an Ewe family is considered as ancestral gift, and they do not sell these gifts anyhow. Ewe people are notable for their fair independence, and they have supported a decentralization of power within a village or through a large state. Decisions have been made by a collection of elders and they have refused to politically support wicked king or leaders. After their experience with the 17th century powerful despots named Agokoli, despite all their internal conflict, they come together in times of war and external conflicts. In regional matters, the chief traditional priest has been the primary power. In contemporary times, the Ewes have attempted to connect and build a common culture and language-driven identity across the three countries where they are commonly found. For patrilineal, the Ewe women are traditionally the major merchants and traders, both at wholesale and retail level. They deal in a wide variety of items, many of which are produced by men. Another notable aspect of Ewe culture, state ethnologies such as Recental and Verticulum is their refusal to blame others, their deep distress and voluntary acceptance of guilt for their ancestors' role in the slave trade. The Ewe have developed a complex culture of music. They have gone to extraordinary lengths to commemorate former slaves, miss them, and making the ancestors of the slaves to be revealed deities as well, closely integrated with their traditional religion. This includes drumming. I always believe that if someone is a good drummer, it is because they inherited a spirit of an ancestor who was a good drummer. Our music has many genres. One is Agbeko, which relates to songs and music around war. This covers the range of human emotion associated with the consequence of war, from courage and solidarity inspired by their ancestors, to the invisible success that awaits our warriors, to death and grief of lose. Cross rhythm drumming is a part of Ewe musical culture. In general, Ewe drums are constructed like barrels with wooden stars and metal rings, or caved from a single log. They are played with sticks and hands, and often fulfill roles that are traditionally to families. The child or baby brother drum, Kagan, usually played on the offbeat in a repeated pattern that link directly with the bell and shaker ostinatos. The mother drum, Kidi, usually has a more active role in the accompaniment. It responds to the larger sogo or father drum. 
the entire assemble is led by the Atimagu or grandfather drum, largest of the group, lyrical song and more prevalent in the southern region. In the north, flutes and drums generally take the place of the singer's voice. The Ewe have an intricate collection of dances, which varies between geographical regions and other factors. One such dance is the Adewu hunting dance. This is professionally dance that celebrates the hunter. They are meant both to make animals easier to hunt and to give animals a ritual funeral in order to prevent the animal spirit from returning and harming the hunter. Another dance, the Agbaja, is traditionally a war dance but is now used in social and recreational situations to celebrate peace. War dances are sometimes used as military training exercise, which signal from the lead drum ordering the warriors to move ahead, to the right, go down, etc. These dances also help in preparing the warriors for battle, and upon their return from fighting, they would act out their deed of the battle through their movement in the dance. The Achagweko is a contemporary version of the Ewe war dance, Atamga, Great Oath, in reference to the oath taken by people before proceeding into battle. The movements of this present day version are mostly in platoon formation and are not only used to display battle tactics, but also to energize and invigorate the soldiers. Today, Achagweko is performed for entertainment at social gathering and at culture presentation. The Acha dance, which is performed mostly by women, is a series of stylistic movements detected to dancers by the lead drama. Each dance movement has its own prescribed rhythmic pattern, which is synchronized with the lead drum. Achia in the Ewe language means style or display. The Bobobo, originally Akpese, is said to have been developed by Francis Kojo Nutro. He is thought to have been an ex-police officer who organized a group in the middle to late 1940s. The dance has its roots from Usuta and in the high life music popular across West Africa countries. Bobobo gained national recognition in the 1950s and 1960s because of its use as political rallies and the novelty of its dance formation and movement. It is generally performed at funerals and other social occasions. This is a social dance with a great deal of room for free expression. In generally, the men sing and dance in the center while the women dance in a ring around them. There are slow and fast versions of Bobobo. The slow one is called Akpese, and the fast one is termed to be Bobobo. Agahu is the name of the dance and one of the many secular music association of the Ewe people of Togo, Dahome, and in the southeastern parts of the Volta region. Each club, Gajo, Takada, and Achagweko, and other such clubs, has its own distinctive drumming and dancing, as well as its own repertoire of songs. A popular social dance of West Africa, Agahu was created by the Igon-speaking people from the town of Ketonu in what is now Benin. From there, it spread to the Badagri area of Nigeria, where a West settlement mostly fishermen had adapted. In dancing the Agahu, two circles are formed. The men stay stationary with their arms out and then bend with a knee forward for the women to sit on. They progress around the circle until they arrive at their original partner. Bejimido is a war dance mostly performed by the people of Mafi, Bokope, and Amegakope in the central Tong district of Ghana's Volta region. Bejimido has been transformed into a contemporary dance and is usually seen only on very important occasions like the Asafotu festival. Celebrated annually by the Tong people around December, the dance is also performed at the funeral of a highly placed people in society, mostly men. Mafi Bokope is a small farming village near Mafi Kumasi. Gota uses the mystical calabash drum of Benin, West Africa. The calabash was originally called the drum of the dead and was played only at funeral. 
It is now performed for social entertainment. The most exciting parts of the gota are the synchronized top of the drummers and dancers. Trovu is ancestral drum music that is played to invite ancestors to special sacred occasion at the shrine. For religious purposes, a priest or priestess would be present. There are fast and slow rhythms that can be called by the religious leader in order to facilitate communication with the spirit world. The bell rhythm is played on a boat-shaped bell in the north, but the southern region uses a double bell. The three drums must have distinct pitch level in order to lock in. So is one of the seven different styles of drumming that belongs to the cult of Yahweh, adapted for stage. Yahweh is the god of thunder and lightning among the Ewe speaking people of Togo, Benin, and in the southeastern parts of the Volta region. Yahweh is a very exclusive god, and its music is one of the most developed form of sacred music in Ewe land. Thanks for watching. Support us by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Follow our social media pages for more mind blowing historical content.